I've been treating breast cancer for more than 30 years. In the late 80s and early 90s, the news I was delivering was not hugely optimistic. Their chances of living more than five years after treatment, on average, was in the 60 to 70 percent range. Thankfully, by focusing our research on survival, incrementally at about 1 percent per annum now, more than 30 years later, that critical five year survival is better than 90 percent. Today, the overwhelming majority of women living in countries with advanced medical systems and equitable access to health care will survive their breast cancer diagnosis. This means that now, more than ever, we have the opportunity to turn our attention to improving the quality of life for the growing number of long-term survivors. We can critique, analyse, reimagine the treatments that we as doctors inflict, and I know that's a harsh word, but it's true, upon our patients. Yes, we're getting better at saving their lives, but how can we make their lives better? That's why my team and I have spent the last 10 years working on breast reconstructions. There's a need for a safer, durable, more functionally aesthetic form of reconstruction, and we have the answer. 3D printed biofabricated scaffolds. More on that in a minute. Um, first, let me tell you a bit about the current options for reconstruction. Now, not every woman diagnosed with breast cancer will require a reconstruction. Advances in screening detection mean that we detect most cancers early when they're still relatively small. We can use more conservative, less invasive procedures. We can often preserve the breast rather than perform a mastectomy, removal of the entire breast. That said, for the many women who still require surgery to remove large portions or the entire breast, the options for reconstruction are limited and complex. Further, results can vary widely. And let's not forget the few men who get breast cancer. Reconstruction for them isn't traditionally discussed, but it should be. From a surgical perspective, it can be particularly challenging producing cosmetic outcomes that improve quality of life if they've had to undergo more extensive invasive procedures or a lot of additional treatments. Right now, there are two commonly performed methods for breast reconstruction surgery. The first is silicon implants. Most of you would be aware of them. Silicon implants are by far the most common method used for cosmetic augmentation. But what you might not be aware of is that silicon implants are also the most common method of reconstruction for women who require a mastectomy. And silicon has been around for a, a very long time. It's regarded as one of the safest substances you can put in the human body. But silicon has its problems. There are immediate risks associated with the initial surgery, including infection and rejection. Further, silicon implants have recommended shelf life of only about 10 years. And finally, because silicon is a foreign material, the body will try to contain it by growing dense tissue around the implant, which forms a barrier. Now that barrier may cause it to harden and contract. This barrier is known as the capsule, and in time, that capsule may fracture and leak silicon into the surrounding tissues. The implants may become uncomfortable, even painful, and the resultant change in shape will have a negative impact on the cosmetic appearance. There's also a condition called implant syndrome, and whilst there's a lot we don't understand about that, it's very real for some women who may experience symptoms as varied as brain fog, extreme fatigue, generalised aches and pains, or even just overall deteriorating health. And there are some also some very rare forms of implant-related cancer. So for these reasons, implants will need to be removed or replaced at some time. Now, the second way to reconstruct the breast is particularly for people wanting a more natural rather than artificial, is a procedure we call autologous reconstruction. Now, this is a procedure where tissue is surgically excised from another part of the body, frequently the tummy or the back, and then moved to the former position of the breast. This is a durable alternative to silicon, 
but a much more complex procedure because transplanted human tissue requires blood supply. And so for these reasons, most women undergoing reconstruction will choose silicon implants despite its potential known complications because of the less traumatic nature of the surgery. And silicon implants are getting the job done and having a positive impact on the quality of life for many cancer survivors. But just because we've got one or two options at work doesn't mean we shouldn't keep looking for more options, better options, options with less complications, and options which give women more agency and choice, especially in the over often overlooked area of overall health and quality of life. My journey to using 3D printed scaffolds for reconstruction started more than 10 years ago. I was sitting in an auditorium right here in Brisbane, listening to a lecture being delivered by a brilliant scientist, Professor Dietmar Huttmacher, who specialises in biomaterials, biomechanics, medical devices and tissue engineering. Now, of course, 10 years ago, 3D printing was regarded by most people as a fairly new concept with limited practical application. But Dietmar was speaking passionately and with great excitement about the potential adaptions and, and benefits of 3D printed materials for various surgical repairs of the body, including the possibility of reconstructing the breast with safe 3D printed materials. Well, as a breast surgeon who specialises in cancer surgery and reconstruction and led a team at a major university hospital, the concepts he presented and the mention of the possibilities of breast reconstruction hooked me in. I cornered Dietmar straight after his lecture and expressed my team's keen interest to work with him in translating his science to a practical purpose. And that work has been continuing in incredibly exciting ways. There has been an explosion of ideas, all requiring the investigation of multiple complex solutions and the bringing together of science and medicine in a process we call translational research. Let me introduce you to the 3D printed biofabricated scaffold for breast reconstruction. As the name implies, it is a scaffold produced in a 3D printer in the shape of a breast. We use this scaffold in place of a silicon implant. It is made from polycaprolactone, the same substance and the same material used to make dissolvable stitches, something that's been used safely in medicine and surgery for many years. We fill the scaffold and position the scaffold and we fill it with fat harvested from another part of the body, typically the tummy or the thighs. There's many advantages um, in using tr transplanted fat. You may be aware of this procedure of liposuction. This can be formed very safely. It's been around for a long time. Uh, but it can be performed very safely in the right environment and expert hands. There's many advantages in using one's own fat to reshape the body. The main one being that it is a patient's own cells, which means the chances of rejection are much lower. There may even be the added benefit of removing fat from a part of your body that you don't really love it. The reason why we don't already do this though for breast reconstruction is that 80% of transplanted fat cells will not survive. Using fat transplantation alone will not deliver the required result unless a woman is prepared to undergo multiple uh, procedures. And to be frank, by the time a woman has reached this point, they've usually been through enough already. And in addition, there would need to be enough fat in the body for this to be done repeatedly. So it's just not a practical way to reconstruct the breast in most instances, which is why silicon implants are, are still used. But we believe that fat transplantation becomes a viable option when you add a scaffold. With a scaffold in place, 
naturally occurring fluids within the body, aided by transplanted fat, will occupy the spaces within the scaffold in a technique we call lipofilling. In time, the scaffold becomes a regular biological part of the human body because it obtains a blood supply to maintain what becomes a woman's own human tissue. In time, the scaffold will completely absorb and disappear. Importantly, retaining the woman's own tissue in its original shape. Most importantly, it will not harden or contract or subject the woman to all the potential complications of silicon. This should be a durable reconstruction for life without all the other associated risks. The unique nature of the scaffold, including the ability to personalise its size and shape, mean that it is also a potential solution for women who just need a portion of their breast tissue removed rather than the, than the entire breast. This could make the world of difference for women whose life-saving surgery has or would leave them with a misshapen breast, not suitable for a silicon implant, but perfectly suited for a scaffold. As the lead investigator in the clinical trial to prove the safety and utility of 3D printed scaffolds, I'm thrilled to share that after 10 years of collaborative hard work, we've passed the necessary hurdles to commence human trials. In June of this year, our team performed the world's first human breast reconstruction using a 3D printed biofabricated scaffold. The procedure was a success. <laughs> I'd like to thank our researchers, biofabricators, designers, funders, medical teams, and last but by no means least, our patients. The patients who volunteer to undertake this journey with us know that they are blazing that trail of investigation that will help thousands of women in the future. I was particularly inspired by Moana, who volunteered to be the first patient to undergo this world's first surgery, putting her faith in us in an act of exceptional altruism and bravery. Here are some of the important people involved in this research. It is a team effort. In the coming years, our human trial will move into the next phase more volunteers, more patients, more surgeries, more research, monitoring and evaluation. It's early days still, and we as doctors tend to err on the side of caution, but so far the results are very positive. I believe our 3D printed scaffolds will be a real game changer in the way we provide reconstruction to breast cancer survivors. We hope to show through our human trials that it is both a safe alternative for women requiring breast reconstruction and for those needing an implant for cosmetic augmentation. But of course, we have to see whether the aesthetic will be equally acceptable to the patients. There's still many hurdles to leap before this can be made widely available. For example, we have to demonstrate to our medical regulators, such as the FDA and the TGA, that this new procedure will meet with their stringent safety standards. But we're making good progress with this. I believe our scaffolding solution is the electric car of the reconstruction space. Sure, we've had something that's been around for a long time and served its purpose, but now a better, safer solution has arrived that will meet the needs of the future. Amazing tissue science, engineering, clinical translation. Support from researchers, patients, our university's funders. Almost 10 years of dedicated, diligent research. All this has led to the introduction of an innovative solution that we believe will improve the quality of life for all those women seeking reconstruction. Because when it comes to healthcare, women deserve respect, choice, and the best outcomes 
that collaboration and medical innovation can provide. Just because we have acceptable options shouldn't mean that we don't stop looking for better ones. Thank you.